How's it going out there? It's September 22nd. I'm Frank Kersey, host of the Wall Street Unplugged Podcast, where I break down the headlines and uh, tell you what's really moving these markets. Man, a lot moving these markets these days. Things going crazy. I'm going to bring in Daniel Creech, senior analyst at Kersey Research, right away here under our new format. Daniel, what's going on, man? How's everything? Oh, you know, just uh, whatever happens today is fixed tomorrow in our markets. So down down 2%. Now everybody's happy. Market's up today. So, yeah. Yeah, we're Nothing to, cover, to see here. We're definitely going to cover a lot of stuff. First thing I want to say is that's a beautiful shirt you have on if you watch our YouTube page. Thank I don't you. know. If, is it new or no? I don't no, know no, no, no. This is years old. Is it? Years old, yeah. Wow. I, I have so many nice golf shirts that, especially living out in Arizona, that uh, the top is a more faded color than the bottom just because mm-hmm. the sun hitting you all the time. So that's, yeah. my, that's my look. I mean, you usually have- Go like for that tight eye look. 10, 15 golf shirts when you go in five, six times a day. Yeah, they usually <laughs> oh, have so. oh, oh. Uh, and yes, I'm jealous because he's getting really good that I can't even play with him pretty soon, but uh, shooting under 80. But uh, so listen, there's a, there's a lot going on with this market, right? A lot of crazy stuff. Uh, let's start out right away with questions. I'm going to ask you a question and we'll try to cover each topic right away because a lot to go over. So is okay. Evergrande, is that story over? No, no way. You okay, did a next great- question. Okay. <laughs> You did a solid job on your monologue yesterday, and you you went over a lot of figures and stuff, but I got to say, man, I, I disagree on the fact. I feel like, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I'm going to give you a chance to defend yourself, but I feel like you're you're taking China for its word, and I think that's a big gray area and red flag. So, for instance, let me ask you this, $300 bi- billion roughly in total liabilities. That's about 2% of China's GDP, according to some reports. Uh, you mentioned they have over 200,000 employees, and they have over 800 projects of which a lot of reports are showing that half of them are halted because they're in such a dire corner, let's Mm -hmm. say, of of crumbling. Um, A, do you believe the $300 And what about off-balance sheet stuff? I guess that's my point. I think that they're going to have to open up their books, right, to China, which we can't trust anything that they say, which is fine. But whenever they open up the books, China, this is a black eye for them. So they got to take care of it, just like Wuhan, right? Yep. Un- scrap it under the table. I don't know how that's going to impact the U.S. markets or have systemic risk. It could have risk for China, yes. Uh, which leads, I guess, to the next question. Should U.S. investors be selling all their China exposure right now, China stocks? And before you say, no, that's absolutely crazy, or yes, Remember, a lot of people own very good names there. Alibaba and Didi, good names. The you know Tencent that have gotten freaking destroyed. Yeah. So you know people are like no, not all exposure, but just you know keep in mind from someone who is an investor there who invested in good companies. All of a sudden, a couple of rule changes and then they're getting smoked. So what do you think? Should they just totally? I mean, we have a lot going on in the U.S. So many places to invest. So much assets, housing market, cars. Cars are the best investment now in the world. New cars, you can buy new cars <laughs> worth more now. Uh, so you know what's the deal with China? Mm. So if you. If you have positions in China, what would I do? I don't have any exposure there. Um, I wouldn't be looking to buy yet. Uh, I wouldn't add new money to China yet, no. Just because I don't, you can't trust them. And what they're doing is they're fundamentally changing. The president over there is fundamentally changing what made China the growth engine of the world. And I agree with you that I believe they still are. I don't I don't believe that they're going to grow at 6 and 8% a year like they project. Um, again, just because of fudge numbers. And I could be totally wrong on that. I just, you our government, Frank, doesn't deserve the benefit of the doubt. No government does because mm-hmm. they're they're awful, awful people. Agreed. Um, let alone their government because of the history and the and the type of government they run, the control more so than here, communism and all that kind of stuff. So they are – the president is literally undoing what made them so successful by mixing a little bit of capitalism in. Uh, so I don't, I don't want to say it's catching a falling knife right now. I just think if you want to buy big connected companies in the government – Buy tech companies here. Hell, we're for sale. Our government's for sale. Buy, buy Facebook's down a little bit. Buy Google. Uh, you know, buy the fangs, basically. Buy, if you want connected with the government, buy that. I just, um, no, I, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be shopping here. I mean, I'd, I'd start a shopping list if you really wanted exposure. And I, I understand the diversity thing. But, man, there's just, I just think there's other low-hanging fruit there. So, no. Yeah. But I'm not saying sell everything if you have exposure there, I guess. Yeah, I, I think there's a buy opportunity. Well, you didn't, if notice... Yeah, you know, there's this big theme out there saying that China's crushing the market. They're they're hating everything. It's uh, you know, and they're relating this to to the U.S. You know, and, and ties with the U.S. somehow. But remember, China needs us. I covered this yesterday. China needs us no matter what, right? I mean, they could say what they want out loud, and everybody's going to believe them for some reason. Even when they talked about tariffs, it was like, listen, China, they're going to cut. They had to. 
Listen, we're buying everything from them, so we're the most important people to them, right? By far. If someone's got to buy their goods or they're done. Uh, they're not going to sell a bonds any, you know, all the bullshit about, you know, they have more control. No, it's not true. It's the people who have the money who have control. And that's the United States, even Europe buying goods and services from them. Now, when you look at the, the places they attacked, I mean, I would stay away from entertainment, social media, video games, gambling. I mean, it seems like that's what they're targeting. But notice how Apple's fine, right? Amazing. You didn't hear one thing out of Apple at all other than, hey, their new iPhone 13, which kind of got killed by even the most biggest fans of Apple saying that, you know, that whole panoramic new camera that they have to shoot movies wasn't even that good and blurry. And of course, they're going to come out and, and, you know, which just fixes on that over the next whatever months and stuff like that. But they from the 12 to 13 is really not a lot other than the battery. The battery is a big deal. I know people care about a battery, but you know, they're trying, Apple used to be able to make everyone upgrade every three years, and that was now they want to do it like every year, year and a half, and that's going to be difficult, but that's what you need when you're at that level, and you, you know, as a hardware company mostly. Yes, their service divisions grow. Anyway, you look at Nike. Nike's, Nike, didn't hear anything about Nike. Caterpillar got hurt a little bit, right, because of infrastructure and stuff like that, and it isn't the real estate, but I, I would think Caterpillar would be more of a buy. You know, they need Caterpillar, and Caterpillar got screwed over and had to write down a $500 million investment in China, but it's a massive, massive, Caterpillar's building this stuff. And they're getting paid by governments, right? So, so you know, regardless if there's anyone in these buildings or not, does it really impact Caterpillar, right? So they're, they're going to get paid. Right. Uh, but I would focus on those names because some names have gotten crushed, especially small mid caps that have exposure to China because everyone thinks, okay, China's a the devil. They're done. Get out of everything. Uh, it's not the case. They're targeting certain industries. So I think it's an opportunity. I'm not telling you to go all in on China. I'm saying you could have exposure, but there are buying opportunities there where, you know, could it get worse? Absolutely. But- when you see companies selling off for reasons uh, other than, you know, their earnings are going down, management teams or whatever, they're just going down because of other sectors are going down. It's usually a good buying opportunity. I think that's what you're going to see with a lot of names there. So I'm a buyer of China right now. Everybody wants to sell China. I'm a buyer as it's getting crushed. It's one of the worst performing equity markets this year so far. Uh, and that's because a lot of the big names, the 10 cents Alibaba's got hit, stay away from those. But there are names with China exposure in the U.S. that are going to do fine. You're not going to see that much of an impact because they're not targeting those areas. And I think... You know, it's a way to make a little bit of money and, and uh, you know, just a way to outperform the overall markets. Two quick things on that. You mentioned Alibaba. Yesterday in the Wall Street Journal, there was a great article, and it's a, it's a solid, long article. Uh, but they point out that over a trillion dollar in stock market value has erased from a handful of the big companies, Tencent, Alibaba. And listen to this, Frank. This is up your alley, especially from that big wig meeting you attended last week. Over $100 billion of wealth from entrepreneurs such as Alibaba founder Jack Ma and Tencent's Pony Ma have been wiped out. Yeah, but still. <laughs> you know what? I look at that. Hey, it's but so Alibaba, funny. what they did was because they're, it's funny how it's disgusting actually, but if you don't learn to laugh at it, you'll go insane. It's funny how similar we sound to China because President Xi, or however you, I'm butchering that, I butcher all names, everybody knows that. All he's saying is nothing new under the sun. They are taken from the rich and giving to the poor because he's coming up to stay in power as well. What do our politicians always say? They want to make everybody pay their fair share. They want to limit um, income inequality. They want to, you know, make everything better for everybody. Alibaba, they are China's forcing them over there. So the interesting thing I'm going to be watching for going forward, and I say going forward, let's call it through the next quarter or into the year. Hell, it's already October, um, basically is when do they make Nike pay more? When do they make Caterpillar pay more to make their fair share? That'll be what I want to see because Alibaba has pledged $15.5 billion to this basically social net. And all that is is basically a donation, right? Because mm -hmm. you want to get in on the good. Um, so that's interesting to me. I like how you said to stay away from those because they are being targeted. So my second thing is what would you how would you play that? Would you just buy a general ETF and kind of hide out there? Or would you buy a specific company? And maybe you don't have one specific, but like, would you just say, hey, you can have exposure there. It's, an, you know, it's been beat up. Risk are in your favor. I, I mean, oh, for me, I'm always looking at places, Daniel, where, where I could have like exposure to, uh, you know, for, for China, right? So for China, I'm looking for, say, a company that has 20% exposure, and yet you'll see that stock come down like 10, 15% because it's something like Evergrande. Uh, you, people are looking at wind. There's different ways to look at wind, right? And, and I'll be quick on this. When it comes to wind, the stock's down 50%. About 50, 60% of their sales, I believe, when I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm very close to that number, come from Macau. 
So people are like, well, it's already factored in, right? That's how people look at it. But damn, that's the wrong way to look at it because it's not factored in. Even though, yes, it went down the percentage of revenues that 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 you know allocated there that they're generating from there. It ha- it, you're taking away its growth multiple. And if you want to know what that means, look at IBM compared to Amazon. Okay, IBM makes fifty percent now. Finally, fifty percent of their profits from from, from cloud. Doesn't matter. They're trading at what? 12 times forward earnings. Yet Amazon commands 30 times. Look at Microsoft 30 times forward earnings, right? They command a bigger multiple. So it's not that simple because Macau was the massive growth market. And if you take the growth market out, yes, you're losing those revenues. And you might say, okay, we're down 50%. It's factored in. It's factored in if they get the full concessions, right? That then you're going to see, you know, that that company bounce back. But Save China says, which they're not going to say that, okay, you're done. You can't be in Macau anymore. That stock is going to crash incredibly because you're taking, because you take away the growth model, mm-hmm. right? Now you have Vegas, which is not really a growth model, right? Even though it's big and it's, you know, growing year over year because of COVID and stuff like that. So that's what you have to be careful of. Another thing I hate when they, they discuss, you know, net worth and how much was, was wiped out. Cause if you look at Jack Ma's net worth, that's where it was probably about, if I had to guess, like 2000, like 13, 14, 15 was probably about 15 billion, 20 billion. And it's like 50 billion now. So it goes down to 47 billion. They're like 3 billion in a day got wiped. <laughs> Believe me, these guys aren't. The amount of money and where the markets are right now and how much all these billionaires have made and how much they're going to make because of inflation and they all own massive assets and real estate that are going to continue to inflate is incredible. So when you see a market come down 2%, it's a great headline. Oh, these guys lost $100 billion. But how about how much did they make over the last three years is nine, you know. Whatever. I, I just kind of laugh at stuff like that. So. Oh, you're right. And I totally fell for that one because you're right. It's good clickbait, but it is just funny to think. Can you imagine, Frank, for one second, and everybody listening, imagine losing billions of dollars and still having billions of dollars. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> that's how a, cool yeah, is that's that? a pretty good position I mean, you to could be, be having a high-end cocktail yeah. and say, man, boy, how was your week? Well, that sucked. I lost $10 billion a day or <laughs> over the week. Oh, man, are you broke? Oh, well, no. <laughs> I mean, I might have to sell an airplane, but I still got a fleet, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so anyway, right, different wa- world. That's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I love to end that segment. All right, let's move on. We got a lot more to talk about. I'm going to try to cover a lot, a lot of things here. So, uh, question: Will Congress finally pass an infrastructure plan this year? This year? No. 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 Why not? Well, hell, they're still arguing about the debt ceiling and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just, if I were a politician, if let's do this, I'm going to put a Democratic hat on. Um, if I was a Democrat, I would wait to try to push in through the infrastructure until next year, uh, because next year is a midterm election year. And if I wanted good news to try to revamp, and I don't think either party is smart enough to understand actually what's going on with the inflation and how much they're responsible with fed policies and the whole, the whole screwed up area up there in Washington. But when you have people hurting and people, the inequality growing, and it's going to continue to get worse because you have higher prices and stagnating wages, you need, you need something to point to when you're closer to election, not further away. So if you pass it now, you're playing your hand first, in my opinion, to get elected because you want to be able to point to that and how good you're doing right now when you want them to go vote. So I don't think either one is serious about getting an infrastructure bill this year. Uh, I hope I'm wrong for different reasons because you know, macro wise, it, there's a lot of things that could be good from that. I just, but so no, I'm, I'm rambling. Stop me, Frank. Short well, answer is uh, no, I not can this tell you year because it's not politically motivating. They're them. dying to pass an infrastructure bill right now, the Democrats, because only 400 billion is really for infrastructure. Everything else is for them. Right. So it, 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 those numbers are broken down. It's 400 billion. I mean, I'm talking about power, roads, bridges, public transit, airports, freight. You can look at the numbers. That's what's going to infrastructure. Everything else going to social programs, a lot of bullshit. Some of it's going to nuclear or whatever. You know, there's different areas, but they want to pass it because that's going to give them a lot more power of all the people that donated to them that wanted them to fund all these industries. So they, they want to pass it right now. Forget about that. Forget about what side of the aisle you're on because both of these idiots on both sides of the aisle wanted a, a trillion dollar infrastructure plan, which seemed like an enormous number uh, when Clinton and, and Trump were running. That was enormous. Now it's three and a half trillion. Everyone's like, oh, okay, that's cool, right? Who cares, right? Doesn't matter. Where's the money coming from? Nobody knows, right? Taxpayer, it doesn't matter. Forget about that. I could tell you this one thing that's not being mentioned anywhere and mark my words on this because I feel as strong as this as I felt like when the market's going to crash a COVID. If we pass this infrastructure bill, I suggest, and you'll see this happen in my portfolios, we are going to start dialing back on a lot of positions because we are going to see inflation beyond belief, worse than what anyone thinks, forcing the Fed to immediately raise rates 
Taper, forget it. Tapering, eh, they stop, but no, immediately. Because we have massive inflation right now. If you're looking at the whole supply thing, the supply chain, which I'm covering in detail and have great sources, this is a tw late 2022 to 2023 problem right now. Hey, I recently read, if you, if you have the Curzio Venture Opportunities newsletter, uh, I covered, I think it's seven or eight leading CEOs talking about this over the past two weeks of the supply chain issues and thought it was going to be fixed right now, and it's not. If you throw the infrastructure, how is everyone going to get the materials, how they're going to get everything? They're already the huge bottlenecks. You can't even get cars. You can't get anything right now. The labor shortage that's going on is incredible. You saw FedEx. We'll cover that in a second to see if that's a buying opportunity. It's actually... The numbers were great, but the cost went up tremendously because salary was up 27%, fuel costs up 50%. I mean, what the fuck is the Fed doing? Do they see what's going on? Do they see this? Because you should be raising rates immediately. If you throw on top of that the infrastructure, it's going to be throwing gasoline, kerosene, pick whatever flammable you want all over this inflation thing. It's going to go through the roof, which means assets are going to really surge. But then you're going to see a very, very big sell-off because a lot of credit has to come out of this market. We have to slow it down. I mean, guys, the people who are talking about this aren't in circles like you are. They don't go to restaurants a lot. They don't talk to their friends. They don't see what's going on. They don't see that you're waiting 40 minutes to eat something that usually takes 20 minutes. They don't see that that the labor shortages, the signs on the doors. These guys hang out with rich people in rich circles. They're not seeing any of that. But what does that mean? A lot of companies are operating at 80% capacity. Their costs are going up tremendously. Food costs, raw materials, everything is going up. Labor is going up, right? And they can only operate at 80% capacity because they can't hire anyone. So if you can't hire anyone right now, and, and you, you, it's, it's a huge labor shortage, what are you going to do? You have to raise prices, and that's what we're seeing right now. I mean, you're looking at, at FedEx raising prices. Before they reported this, yesterday, they said they raised prices by the most percentage basis in 10 years. I mean, you're going to see, if you look at the numbers, even with FedEx, they said, uh, which I thought was interesting, how uh, across FedEx right now, more than 600,000 packages a day are being rerouted. Rerouted. They 600, don't have 600, more than 600,000 packages a day are being rerouted. That's what they said in the call. So you know, they have a $450 million year over year increase just in labor costs. Fuel, I don't understand. I don't know why they're not freaking hedged like everybody else in, in this industry and anybody who has a fleet. But, you know, for me, when I look at this, if you see Congress pass this, mark my words, you should be dialing back. You should be scaling out of positions and lowering because you are going to see the market really, really come down, especially risk assets. At the beginning, when this inflation really starts taking off, you're going to see home prices go up, asset prices go up. That's okay, right? When you have inflation, that's what the Fed wants. The Fed's really going to get what they want if they pass the infrastructure bill. That's my warning. I like that. That's a good warning. Yeah, so what would you, so we get out of some stuff, and then where does that money flow? It it would have to well doesn't have to, but we would probably recommend a lot more commodity plays. We would recommend a lot more hard asset plays because you can't just go hide out in cash when inflation really takes no. off. And I'm not saying that's what you're saying, but you know, think about that from an investor standpoint. You don't want to hide out in cash when inflation's going through the roof because you're going to be losing money hand over fist. But you're right; there's going to be a lot of what we need to prepare for, in my opinion, is this new normal going forward because inflation is not, Frank, I don't even want to say your favorite word because it sets you off, but I love it. Inflation is not transitory. Transitory. That's transitory. a drinking game right there, I'm telling you. Let me ask you a question. How can inflation be transitory? How can it be transitory if we are going to have a supply shortage that lasts through 2022? It's impossible. We're going Absolutely. to see higher inflation over that time. There's, so transitory to them could be 18, 24 months. It's transitory means like three months it, by definition. Maybe maybe you go six months, very, very short term. They're not projecting that inflation to go up that high next year. And there's no way inflation goes down if you continue to have this shortage and you do. If you're looking at the shippers, you're looking at the builders, you're looking at it's getting worse. They're lowering their numbers for third quarter and they start to lower the numbers for fourth quarter. This was supposed to be a bottoming out in Q2 and it's not happening. I told you, yeah. four GM, the freaking the CEOs are on TV lying to you, talk about their EV portfolios because they're going to have to freaking report 40, 50, 60 percent declines in production. It's going to happen across the board. Everybody sees it. And what's going on right now is there's a bid. There's bidding. So there's only there's a limited supply of containers and the biggest companies have the most money and they're willing to overbid, which means other companies are not going to get their supplies in time. It's why you're getting golf clubs in six months, your mattress in, in, in seven months, why you can't get a new car with your specs. Just what your color is going to take you nine months. They'll say it's four months, but it'll take you longer than that. This is a problem that's not short term. They haven't figured it out yet. It's very difficult to say, okay, produce more of everything and more content. Because then, 
I look with with, with uh, Taiwan Semi in 2017 when crypto went nuts and they needed all you know the chips and stuff like that. They they started making a lot of money off it. Then they overproduced and the market crashed. You know, like shit. Now you know it hurt them. That's what companies are afraid of. They'd rather have this problem, be able to generate profits than just over and it has tons of inventory. So it's not going to fix itself right away. It's something that that's, I feel like it's not a big issue. People talk about supply chain, but they still think it's going to end pretty soon. It's not going to end soon, which means you're not going to see inflation slow anytime soon. It cannot happen. No. And we talked about this months ago. Uh, the definition, it'll be transitory because all they got to do is get through the year over year comps. And then once it's sky high, but hey, it's not too bad compared to last year, how it was sky high. Yeah. And that's going to be their view. Well, you know, they're going to move the goalposts like it, you know. And another thing we've talked about, you're right. It is impossible not to have inflation because any time you dump and create more money into an economy that's not created by entrepreneurs, it's not created by generating wealth and services, anytime you dump more money into an economy and you can't increase the supply of goods, you simply have more money chasing the same amount of goods or less and you have higher prices. The new normal is going to be, hey, people are going to have less money because at some point you think the stimulus has to taper back and it already has. And I'm talking direct checks and things like that. And yet you have wages um, suppressed other than people just trying to get employees. But you have cost going sky high, like you said, fuel and everything mm -hmm. else. That We're transitioning to that period, Frank, where I think what's good for Main Street is not going to be good for the stock market. And that's a big deal because... If things do get out of hand and then Main Street starts to recover a little bit, everybody's going to have to pull back. Um, that's not going to be good for the markets. There'll still be pockets to where we can find great opportunities, but you're going to have to be a lot more nimble and just you, you're just going to have to get to uh, a new expectation level and a new normal. Yeah. Okay. So we got a couple minutes left here. Let's go over some stocks. FedEx is it a buy in this pullback? No, not yet. I think it's a buy in this pullback. You know why? How, how, what percentage is it down? It's, it can't be down 10%, is it's, it? It was down, it's down 8% as of now. So All we're right. doing this at about 10.30. So it's down 8% as of now. The time gotcha. you guys get this, it'll be a few hours from now. Right? We're getting better with production, right? Right away, getting this stuff out quick. Uh, you Telling know, it's you. pretty good. I mean, you know, CBC, oh, it's well it takes off its highs, too. What you say? It's well off its highs, too. Yeah, so, so FedEx, the reason why I like FedEx here, and I'm not telling you that if you buy it here, it couldn't go down another 5%, 7%. I'm not telling yeah. you that. So if you, if it's technical and you're going to take quick loss, so you, you know, whatever, that means you're not going to, whatever, you're going to be short term. FedEx is a stock to buy because they have pricing power. You want to buy companies that have pricing power. This is why I think a lot of restaurants are going to get crushed. A lot of restaurants are going to get crushed. They're trading at crazy multiples. But when I look at Chipotle, Chipotle could charge whatever they want. People are going to buy that. All right. So you know, there's certain areas, there's certain places that people are going to buy. McDonald's is also going to have pricing power because even if they raise everything by 10, 15 percent, they're still going to be the cheapest around to, to buy. And it's going to be make a big deal right now. So McDonald's is a great buy. I think. Be best breakfast for fast food around. Yeah, I mean, Maybe. listen, McDonald's, oh, I don't want to tell you my McDonald's <laughs> Sorry, story. I'll get you out there. No. <laughs> oh, gosh, no, not that story. No, yeah, I, I went in with nuggets. Uh, I went to get nuggets for my daughter and uh, one of her friends. And don't they go forgot, there, Frank. Yeah, they forgot, they forgot the nuggets, right? So I go in there, really quick story. I went in there, I said, hey, you know, I, so I went through the drive-thru. I always check the bag because they always make a mistake here, right? Every time, like 90% chance, right? I'm like, ah, they can't make a mistake. It's like, a, you know, Happy Meal and, and, and you know, nuggets. So pull out, they're like, they forgot the nuggets. So I'm like, shit. So I pull out and I park into like, this is Zaxby's right next door because I couldn't, you know, get around that quick. So I walk across, you know, the park lot and, and go to McDonald's and, and say, hey, you know, you forgot my, my nuggets. She goes, no, I didn't. I said, they're not in the bag. She's like, go get the bag. <laughs> I said, what? So I went to go get the bag and I showed it to her. She's like, no, I gave them to you. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? I said, you really? <laughs> right? So I walked out. And then I just, and I'm not like this. I never lose it. Like, I never really lose it like this. And I, I went in there and I lost it. And there was a lot of people in there. And I started, I would say, you got to be fucking kidding me right now. I said, you really think I'm trying to get, get off, get six nuggets from you? I said, my daughter's in the car with a friend and one of them can't eat because she forgot it. I said, put the cameras on. I said, let me talk to your manager. She goes, I am the manager. I said, you're the fucking manager? I said, really? And I, and all of a sudden she starts going to the back. And another one's like, you got to deal with this guy. And she, at 10 minutes, I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, either give me my money back or the nuggets. Give me the, I suggest giving the nuggets since you're making, like, you know, margins are through the roof on the, right? I was like, but you really think I'd come out of my car, go in there, and say, and try to get, like, steal six nuggets from you? Like, that's fucking Florida for you. I, I, and I felt bad because I'm not a person that makes scenes. People were backing away because I started, I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. And, and huh? sure enough, some lady just comes by, you know, behind the counter and gives me nuggets and says, here you go. And I said, really? I said, was that so difficult? I said, did this really have to happen? You're calling. And she's like, well, you didn't have to curse or anything. I said, yes, you're calling me a liar. 
I say, <laughs> you get it for chicken nuggets. Anyway, that's my story. I guess all publicity is good publicity. Holy for cow. listeners and subscribers, I immediately went to YouTube to make sure that Frank wasn't on TikTok. Oh, or, my God. Yeah, that, I wanted to get, you know what? How is that possible? How is that possible? Imagine that. Uh, anyway, that's anyway. my story. But FedEx, I like because they have pricing power. I focus on the companies that have pricing power. That leads us to crack a barrel, which hasn't done so good, right? No, it's well off its highs, too. It was, little, it was right around $175 a share. Uh, call it Mayish, a little bit before May. Now it's under 140. Uh, they warned they missed. It wasn't bad earnings. They they got a dollar 30 in dividend, which is damn near four percent yield. Um, they're expecting single to high, uh, mid to single high digits uh, wage inflation and commodity inflation. I like Cracker Barrel. I think that's a great brand. Um, I think you have tremendous loyalty there. Stock has pulled back nice. So yeah, I'd buy Cracker Barrel over FedEx right now. Yeah, crack Cracker Barrel. I'm telling you, that's the. I'm gonna get in so much trouble for saying this, but that's the ultimate fat person place. It is I amazing. Was, I was fat. For I got a long I got time. redneck in me, so I I. You I know, mean, if you man, if you and I feel bad saying that, but if you have an appetite, man, you can get like pancakes, waffles on top of it, eggs, whatever, and it's like less than ten bucks. And yeah, I mean that's a it's an well, awesome it might not place. Be anymore. <laughs> it's an awesome place, but if you like to eat, that's where you go. But I will say, same store sales, uh, restaurant sales declined six to eight percent in Q4. That that's a little surprising. Mm -hmm. little well, they surprising. get hit with travel because a lot of their businesses, you know, they have good locations right yeah, off the highways true. and different things. So when you got this point. Delta scary and all that. Uh, but yeah, just their low toe, they'll buck up. They they got a lot of options. And they also, I don't know if they announced a new or it was an increase on a share buyback. So, you know, they're they're trying to play that game and manage the the share price as they should to a certain extent. And th th they got they got options to cut cost, in my opinion, to this, really This to really is it right serious. here. This is it. COVID, so reading from, from, from you know, th their call, uh, this was uh, yesterday. COVID has impact not only consumer traffic, but also staffing. And many industries are facing the challenge of a nationwide labor shortage, right? So Cracker Barrel made significant progress in, in, in its back of house staffing, for example, kitchen staff, but fewer servers. Service can be very slow, which doesn't help create more repeat customers. There's something very powerful there because when you go into a restaurant now, it is slower. Mm -hmm. You're paying more, but you're not getting the same service. And that's a problem. That's going to result in people not coming back. Because if you could charge, I've paid much more than I was supposed to for things and the service was that good where I'm like, that's why I'm paying. Right. Right? That's what people pay for. It's like a luxury brand. It's made of the same shit that fucking everything else is made of but because you slap a name on there, that's what it is. So if you're damaging that brand or that restaurant is not that good anymore and the service isn't that good, which I've seen with Starbucks over here used to be fantastic. Now they're missing like half the stuff there. You go in there, they don't have half the stuff. The line, it wraps around the building. It takes 15, 20 minutes to go to a drive through Let's take five minutes and you know what? I find myself going someplace else. So. I don't really know if a lot of that is factored in where stocks are trading. We saw a little bit of pullback. We're only about 3% off of our highs in the SP 500. But you know, there's going to be a big separation, especially restaurant stocks, stocks that don't have pricing power because inflation is going to get worse. You're looking at FedEx. You're looking at these numbers. You're looking at fuel costs. Look at natural gas. Holy cow. I mean, if you're not paying attention, the Fed, they're either not paying attention. It's, it's on purpose and they don't give a shit or they're ignorant. So, But either way, Both. they're going to have to do something because it's crazy. Uh, last thing here is, is Disney, because you know how much I, I love Disney, but they came out and they warned and said our subscriber growth is not going to be as high as expected, and the stock fell about 4%. Uh, what are your thoughts? Is Disney a buy here? No, I, I haven't liked Disney. I mean, I missed it. Disney went up. You know, uh, we recommended the put, but no, I just, like I said, there's there's too many opportunities out there to avoid something that's talked about every single day on TV, so my biasness towards that is just ridiculous. Disney so, did a great admit. job marketing. They mm -hmm. did a great job marketing showing that, hey, we could add tons of subscribers, over 100 million. A lot of those are free. I bet you more than 70% are free. Now they're coming off their list to see and churn, uh, especially with their international customers, which are much less. Their average revenue per user is lower than everybody else, right? So they put all their eggs in one basket, and that's what demanded the premium. It's trading at 40 times earnings. Now you just said that you're going to see slower subscriber growth, fewer new content coming out. I just looked at content for September and October, uh, for all content, all streaming content. The top 20 were amazing. HBO and Netflix dominated them, the best to see, because they are spending $20 billion, which Disney doesn't have to spend. They're sitting on a terrible balance sheet because of their Fox asset, acquiring Fox assets, uh, media assets. And you're looking at a company where earnings are not growing as fast. Now you don't have that growth. How the hell does this have a 40 times multiple? I just looked today to see if anyone downgraded the stock. Of course not. You know why? Because they know they're going to have to raise money. They're going to have to raise a shitload of money if they want to compete in this industry. 
So when you look at the new content in October, it has the best actors. You get HBO's going crazy. The new Sopranos. You got Netflix coming out. Diana, they play whatever. They they just they just loading it up. It's not even like these are. It's by the day they have pro, so many programs coming out by the day that Disney can't compete. Disney's not even on there. Streaming is about new content. If you want people to continue to pay up for that service, which you're not really going to have pricing power anymore because there's so many competitors. So many competitors. I mean, I, my, one of my favorite shows was uh, Inside the NFL with Phil Simms and Ray Lewis because they have uh, a contract. I don't know if it's exclusive with NFL Films, which mics the players. So they so that when they show the highlights, they show the player mic'd and, and talk and trade. It's great, right? They took it off Showtime. We know it's, it's on Paramount Streaming. I've never seen it again. Uh, so I'm not going to download Paramount to stream. I mean, I like the show and everything, but everyone is streaming. So how do you have pricing power? It's all about new content. Disney... If I was Disney, I'd raise $10 billion right now at 160, 155. You could easily do that because now one analyst downgraded because they all have positive outview and outlooks. I don't know how it's trading at 40 times earnings when you're not seeing those earnings grow and their growth just got cut. Uh, but yet there's not one downgrade. They're not lowering estimates because they want a piece of that massive, massive financing that they're going to do and they have to do it. So I think you're going to see it come. They should do it right now while everyone's positive because I think those numbers are going to get a lot worse, but we'll see. So in end, that's the first stock we agreed on. We just both avoid Disney. Uh, uh, yeah, but you know, for me, you should do the opposite because my track record with Disney sucks. <laughs> I mean, the numbers all make it's almost like AMC telling you that how much it's worth two dollars. So buy calls, and it goes buy next like, month's calls. <laughs> yeah, so you should be buying calls right now. But I'm fair with that. I know I've been wrong. It's all about the stock price. But I'm just saying, someone that looks at the numbers, it's funny how Disney's been lying for such a long time, and they won't tell you how many are free. And you know, I got Disney for free forever. I'm sure a lot of people did who have Verizon accounts, but. Uh, Gotcha. Yeah, it's just really interesting. But anyway, we covered a lot there. We ended on a good note there. That was good. I think we zipped through everything, right? We're at the 30-minute mark. That's pretty good. Oh, nice. All right. Well, thanks that's, for coming that's on, That's damn near first. That's good for us. That is. That is. That <laughs> is. Okay, we both got to shut up now because we're at 31. <laughs> so, Dan, thanks so much for coming on, man. Great stuff. And guys, feel free to email us, frank at, at crazyresearch.com. Uh, Daniel, what's your email? Daniel at crazyresearch.com. Very simple. Very simple to remember. Feel free to send your complaints, arguments, whatever you want. We're here. We can take it. We could take it. All right, Dan. Thanks for coming in. Guys, that's it for me. Really appreciate all the support. And I'll see you guys next week. Take care.